back, aspiring agents. Today, we're diving deep into the world of real estate math, specifically the powerful 2836 rule. Whether you're preparing for your real estate exam or just looking to sharpen your skills, you're in the right place. So buckle up and let's conquer the 2836 rule together. But before we dive in, don't forget to show some love by subscribing, liking this video, and hitting that notifications button. Let's get started. So what exactly is the 2836 rule? Well, my friend, it's a fundamental guideline used by lenders to determine how much debt a borrower can comfortably handle. It's a crucial concept to understand for your real estate exam and your future career as a real estate agent. Let's break it down. The 2836 rule consists of two parts, the front end ratio and the back end ratio. The front end ratio suggests that a borrower's monthly housing expenses should not exceed 28% of their gross monthly income. This includes mortgage payments, property taxes, and insurance. The back end ratio, on the other hand, states that a borrower's total monthly debt, including housing expenses, should not exceed 36% of their gross monthly income. Now, Let's put the 2836 rule into practice with some example problems. Feel free to grab a pen and paper to work along with me. Let's solve some problems now, step by step, using the 2836 rule formula. Remember, the front end ratio or housing expense ratio is 28% and the back end ratio or total monthly debt ratio is 36%. I'll walk you through each calculation explaining the reasoning behind it and provide you with the answers. Number one, according to the 2836 rule, what is the maximum percentage of a borrower's gross monthly income that should be allocated towards housing expenses? Pause the video if you need more time. In this example, I see that it says housing expenses. So that automatically tells me that I'm looking for the 28%. So my answer is B. Number two, according to the 2836 rule, what is the maximum percentage of a borrower's gross monthly income that should be allocated towards total debt, including housing expenses? Feel free to pause the video to answer the question. I see this problem says total debt including the housing expenses. So that is going to be 36%. Number three, Amy has a gross monthly income of $5,000. What is the maximum amount she can allocate towards her total monthly debt, including housing expenses, to stay within the 2836 rule? Feel free to pause the video to answer the question. Here they're asking for total monthly debt, including housing expenses. So I know I have to use the 36% out of the 2836 rule. Remember to change the 36% to a decimal by dividing by 100 and I get 0 0.36. Now all I have to do is multiply $5,000 times my 36%, and that equals $1,800. So my answer is C. Number four, a potential FHA borrower's monthly housing expense is $504. The total monthly gross income is $1,800 and the total monthly obligations are $648. What is the monthly housing expense ratio for the borrower? Feel free to press pause to answer the question. Since they're just asking for monthly 
housing expense ratio, no one's monthly housing expense ratio should exceed 28%. So I am going to say the answer is A. Number five, Lisa has applied for a loan. Her gross monthly income averages $4,100. She has a monthly car payment of $425 and owes a balance on two credit card accounts with payments totaling $75 per month. If approved, her monthly mortgage payment will be $825. What is Lisa's monthly housing expense ratio and total obligations ratio? Feel free to pause the video to answer the question. For this example, I will start with the monthly housing expense ratio and then I'll do total obligations ratio. In the question, it says that if she's approved for the monthly mortgage payment, it will be $825. So I will take the $825 and divide it by her total gross monthly income to see what her monthly housing ratio is. When I divide that, I get 0 0.201, which equals 20%. Now, for her total obligations ratio, we are going to add up all of her monthly payments. Her car payment is $425. Her credit cards are $75. And then her housing will be $825. We're going to divide that all by her total gross monthly income. When we add up the top line, we get a total of $1,325, and we're going to divide that by $4,100. When we divide that, we get a total of 0 0.323, which equals 32%. So my answer is C. Number six, Tony has a gross monthly income of $8,500. His monthly housing expenses are $2,800. What is the maximum amount he can allocate toward other debts to comply with the 2836 rule? In this example, they give us the monthly housing expenses of $2,800. Now they want to know how much he can afford in other expenses. So we have to use the 36%. So I take 8,500 and I multiply it by 0 0.36. And that equals $3,060. I just now have to subtract the amount that I get from the total obligations ratio of $3,060 from the total monthly housing amount, which equals $260. So Tony is only able to have other bills up to $260, including his monthly housing expenses. So my answer is C. Number seven, Michael's gross monthly income is $5,500. His total monthly debt is $1,900, including housing expenses. Does he satisfy the requirements of the 2836 rule? First, we have a total monthly debt of $1,900. So I'm going to use the 36% uh, percent of this rule to make sure he does not exceed the 36%. So what I'll do is I will take 5,500 and multiply it by 0.36. I get a total of $1,980. That is the maximum amount that Michael can have in total expenses, including housing. So since his total monthly debt is $1,900, then he does satisfy the requirements of the 2836 rule. So the answer here is yes. If it was $2,000 my total here, then it would be a no. He does not satisfy the requirements. Number eight, Alex earns a gross monthly income of $4,500. If his monthly housing expenses are $1,300 and his total monthly debt 
is $1,700. Is Alex within the limits of the 2836 rule? So now what we'll have to do is just multiply the $4,500 of his gross monthly income times both percentages. So the first one I will do is the 28%. So 4,500 times 0 0.28 equals $1,260. Now we do it with the 36%. So $4,500 times 0 0.36 equals $1,620. So his monthly housing expenses are $1,300. That does not work. He can only spend $1,260 on housing and he's spending $1,300. So automatically that's a big no. Let's check the total obligations ratio of 36%. Here it shows that he's only able to spend $1,620 within this ratio and he is way over so the answer here is b no number nine betty's gross income is seven thousand fifty dollars a month what is the maximum total household debt she could have to qualify for most loans utilizing the 2836 rule in this example, I see it saying total household debt. So all I'm going to do is use the 28%. Remember to change the 28% to a decimal by dividing by 100. And that will give you 0 0.28. Now, all you have to do is multiply $7,050 by 0 0.28. And that equals... $1,974. So my answer is A. Number 10. If Emily's gross income is $8,550 a month, she would need to spend less than blank in total household debt a month to qualify for most loans, utilizing the 2836 rule. So we are looking for total household debt only so that means we're only going to use the 28 percent with her gross income of eight thousand five hundred fifty dollars i will just multiply that by the 28 percent and remember to divide by a hundred to change the 28 percent to a decimal so i multiply by that and that equals $2,394 is what she is able to spend on her total housing ratio. So my answer is C. Congratulations, real estate warriors. You've successfully mastered the 2836 rule. Understanding this concept is crucial for both your real estate exam and your future success as a real estate agent. Remember to practice other problems on your own to solidify your understanding. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please show your support by subscribing, liking this video, and hitting that notifications button. Also, leave me a comment if there's any other videos that you'd like to see. Don't forget to share it with your fellow aspiring agents too. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, keep chasing your real estate dreams and acing those exams.